<clears throat> All right, let's do this thing because why the heck not, right? Today we're gonna do the forest of meat, and I'm actually excited because I think it's it's gonna. If I remember right, the forest of meat because I saw this game a long time ago. It's actually pretty cool, but really worthy is like there's a be a lot of words but hey why the heck not huh for some reason my title of my stream and the uh it's not correct it's supposed to be the forest of meat There we go, the forest of meat. Nice. Alright, let's do this. Too bad there's no fast travel because it's gonna take a while. But today we're finally tackling down the forest of meat. And it's gonna be super fun. Ouch. Huh? You got a quest, sir? You're looking for a kid who ran away from home? Yes. There was a strange kid asking people questions earlier. I think he was trying to learn how to get into facade. Of facade, course. Huh? Maybe we should go take a look. That will be for another time. But let's go to the forest of meat. Well, people will be dreaming a bunch. Okay, Mr. Pork, one more have a lead like. Let's do it. Ha! Ah! Hey, Kaine. I just love to roll <laughs> like this instead of running or like do I, do I have enough button? This gave you, this lady gives you a bunch of money for like each time you get her mutton for your kids. Please get that mutton. Okay, I don't have enough mutton. Really good singers, I gotta say. They're pretty darn good. Too bad uh, that's only one time the quest. Because I already did that duet quest. It's pretty darn good. When one of them sing together. Of course, Warner Shoppo loves to copyright it even though it's not their song, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Then. Ah! Come, Miss Fork. Ow! Get the heck out of my way, you jerk. Alright. Ow! You. I'm trying to do a quest here, okay?
Bam. Okay. All right. Now let's go there. Very good. All right. Here it is. The town is so close by? It sure is quiet here. Yeah. Such silence bodes ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm certain of it. You know, Ooh, a little dandy. optimism now and then wouldn't hurt, Vice. Such cheek. <laughs> Let me increase the volume. For some reason, I don't know, how is it for you guys? I think it's a bit uh low. There we go. All right, Mister, are you the uh, mayor? Beware, beware the words. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. Those who dream. Those who dream. Okay, here we go. A strange new sensation in my mind. Why is Rose in a quizzical way? It is not quizzical. What's going on? The villager's body shudder as he slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? We heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. The mayor stare at some better and wise. You can speak to me. I must have caught you in my dream. Uh oh. In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past week, a mysterious disease called the Dead Dream had spread across all the forests of meat. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined that the dead dream was spread from person to person by spoken words. But before he could learn more, the, the disease took him as well. Why stare at the mayor, his mouth douching slightly? Uh, see here. He said, Are you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes. Say the mayor. In other words, say you some red death dream? Before the mayor will confirm Sombrero's suspicion was blow with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. <laughs> That's what you will say in a dream, wise. It's like saying, pinch my cheek. Obviously, you will not feel pain, or maybe you will feel pain in a dream because it's a dream. You will uh, go according to the dream's rules. Obviously, you will say that in a dream. That's just how the death dream works. You tell him, Mayor. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the Soviet to who Sombrero, Sombrero had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream. Said a the mayor. Conversation, a specific word, something. Sombrero and Wise racked their brains who could find, who could find noisy solution. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter. Too many meaningless conversations. Does not engage in meaningless conversations. 
Their marriage education that wives use his word carelessly seemed to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. Hey, I'm doing my best, wise. It has demolished it utterly. If you dare wise look at Skyward, as <laughs> if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. <laughs> Just leave me alone already. The angry creator of his harsh words fled over to Sombrerero like a contagion. Wait, says Sombrero suddenly. Did somebody just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, what well, the village told us that the wash out for contagion's word, right? The mayor leaned forward with her new interest, pushing a star to wise aside in the process. You must just say something, right? asked the mayor. So a specific combination of words. What was it? It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or what the hell was it? A sleep? A sheep? Cried white suddenly, burning out the first thing that popped on his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few minutes of thought, sombrero face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said, those who dream, that's what he said, I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through, uh, flipped through them, and a few times before finally nodding his approval at Sombrero. That sounds right, he said as a straight sheet of paper fluttered on the run. My notes also mention something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head. His warm vessel stopped tracing her eyes across a long piece of paper. For the last month, I had done nothing but study the disease we call a daydream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect my people from whatever comes along. But I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor passed, a grim crossing his face. I should will probably be taking notes or something. Wise immediately fired back. Applaud the force and will take the research and disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bet a new fire force to escape in this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his peso, snapping off the tip. I tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream. I have been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I know about it. He paused for a moment, he unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once it is too cold, things change. It's like someone took a sponge and took all the and took all the color out of their lives. I just want us to be a whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Sombrero nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second, wait a second, I did not. Look, if we can be uh, of any help, say Sombrero, just ask. Now hold it, now hold on, now hold on, now hold on. I did not just say that. Silence, cried Wise. The glimmer looks from Sombrero to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Your wife's face is always confident, thank you very much. Now see here, Mayor. You told us that nothing can exist in the dream without your knowing of it. But yet, you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived. Yes? The Mayor slowly raised his head, or lashing down on his face. Oh my god, he said. You are right, you are right, I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is limitless alien, say wise. And dreams are full. If you can't imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search, search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know I can, how can I repay you. Payment is not required. We are eager to ask you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly fell as he could breathe again. He almost forgot what it was like. Good luck, he called, departing from Sombrero and Weiss. We'll continue on you. As Sombrero slowly fade into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. 
I saw these men once before, he thought, but where? Sombrero's boot darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of this place still knew Tim, he'd be confident they could get in, find an exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed around him. The mist made it difficult to seek more than a foot in any direction, and most covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to sell himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left a small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Wise was proving to be a spectacular port uh, traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time pushing Sorrel to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Wise muted, something about the legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Sorrel snapped. Okay, Wise, grab it off for a second, will you? You don't have to walk! Sombrero leaned against the tree and tried to stretch the knees from the back. How can this stupid forest be so big? <laughs> he muttered to himself. The moment the words trouble from his mouth, a, caco a cacophony of wings sprang to life. Every imaginable form of bass click and his roar out of the bullion that rattled his teeth. Sombrero slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Wise, what's going on? Sombrero could see why most moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects scream, the forest howl! And then, the sombrero ears seemed to ready to be tear from his head and go running for cover. The sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listen to the creatures of the woods. Three, 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 three! Chica, 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 wow, wow! Chica, 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 yeah! What does the fox say? Wooma, 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 wooma! Chica, 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 chica! And they're sitting in the ancient symphony of the email around the decibel. Sombrero began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. And with it, it is lacking. Two, with its ideal. Three, with it, with it, it is. Okay, one, with it, is lacking. Two, with it, it is ideal. Three, with it, is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I'll leave the, to you the answer. One with it is lacking, two with it is steel, three with it is dangerous. What is it? The answer is a secret. How should I know? It's a secret because, uh,. With one is lacking, if you know the answer, uh, I mean, if you only know the thing, it's not really a secret. You know something, that's all. Two persons is a secret, because you know somebody else is holding something. But if a third person knows it, it's a higher chance of somebody to snitch. In what is furious and wise left the task to him, so we're outside and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Earn, earn that right. The sun analysis stopped suddenly as began the forest underground part of before Sombrero like a rippling wave opening a new path. These forest underpots are making a rope for us, said Wise Weekly. Please are passing the test, Sombrero move only with new intensity. The part offered his body relief from underground, who gave even greater sheer to his mind as long as they were on the path. Their journey had purpose. I guess the forest has set us, huh? I say Sombrero after a bit. Watch his pan around to face his companion. Do not mistake in the will of the first for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads.
As White finishes picking the pair to corner and found themselves facing clear forest spring. A smiling sombrero pick up small rock, send the skipper across the surface of the water. Good heavens, say Wise. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a music could not run out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sat to the bottom of the spring, the ripples he left behind came together to form words. I entered to the window, who break no grass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Absurdly easy! Bark wise, now answer it! Samuro grabbed his teeth and tried not to reach out and struggle his companion. He is right after all. This one is pretty easy. I enter through the window, will break no grass. When I falls, I vanish. What am I? Sunlight. Sunlight! A plume of water suddenly burst on the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected on the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spinned the entire horizon. In all my years, Sir Weiss, Say why softly. I had never seen such a sight. Perhaps I misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey look, cried Sombrero, awaking wise from his days. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friends in the hut, Wise saw a small cottage nest among the trees. That's where it's in it, Wise. I mean, who built a house all the way out here? Sombrero walked over, pounded the door after a minute, saw the banging the door cracked open, and a small man peered out. His body was clothed from the neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Hmm, the Emperor Sombrero, well, before he could get any further, the cloaking man held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning, two on the noon. By the end of the night with three. What am I? Somero tried to ask the clock man who he was and what he was doing, but he simply repeated a question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Wise, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Somero. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning, two at the noon, and for uh, at night I have three. What am I? You are a demon! <laughs> no, it's just a man. It's not. A man! The mist is off from the crooked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. You are the mayor! cried Sombrero. The small man slowly shook his head. I am no mayor, you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry, what, what, what do you mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on the crackling the seal of the dead tree. Now you must go to the person of the forest entrance. With what? With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him as a barrel watched speed sip up from the ground and involved the cottage and raising it for insistence. When Sombrero and Wise returned from the forest entrance, they found out the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang out to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy! He brought good gravy, what the heck? <laughs> How much you love gravy, old man! You made it! You actually made it back! I forgot how the, uh, what, uh, what voice did I gave to the mayor. He left a uh, hand, grabbed some Sombrero and pumped it so fierce they threatened to dislodge her from the socket. Ouch! While well, his right sees wise by the cover and swung him through the air. Yeah. <laughs> God, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool. We have not even told you if you wire were successful or not. The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I ever see you again. Sombrero withdrew himself from the mayor eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the dead dream seal, he said. At least I think we did. The major lay spinning sombrero filled with fin on the tails. When the tail was done, the three of them lay down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Sombrero cocked his head. Okay, hang a second, this is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Since you're under a sparrow and go to sleep, fool, fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Sombrero and the mayor immediately reclined atop the grassy earth. 
Have you forgotten? Continued Wise. It is words that control the dead dream. Words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how natural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath is slowly, is slowing in. This is the first time, said Big and Mayor. The first time I have felt tired, since I was in prison here. His words were cut off by a loud, long jam, and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they woke, things had slightly more real quality to them. The mistful ticker, the leaves greener, it was clear that they had awakened for their dream. Sir Mero shook the Mayor's shoulders gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh wow, said the Mayor in an owl voice. We did it! I'm back! He blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The dread dream was spreading through our village, and I wanted to, while well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it. Well, I guess I was in the case. I must cut the cut the disease and become trapped in my own dreams. The mayor started to stand. They collapsed back to the air. He started his like as he's trying to remember how they worked. Then glances of air and shrug. With a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor, as far as my across the sleep. You shall sure refrain in short order, I'm sure. You shall sure refrain in short order, I'm sure, said Wise. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying his dead feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in a dire dream. I had to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village. They bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained. When the prayer was finished, this is the warning of our village, history, and our memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, murder wise. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods. Magic known as a seal burst. Sombrero wise could not contain their supplies. It is. <coughs> Sorry. It. <coughs> It said my goal had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, Matter Wise, this is yet a stroke of luck. And the three of them say their goodbyes. Sombrero mentioned that strange man who has given them the terrido and the mysterious words he had left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, Matter Mayor. What in the world does that mean? Last in thought, he is staring into space for a long moment. You know, he says softly. This is going to sound odd, but I have a feeling I have seen you before too. Somero tried to keep a straight face and fell, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. The Yabur, right? Anyway, I figure I use uh, I figured you saw kind of illusion created by the daydream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Somero gave the mayor a note and a smile, but in Waterly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? The reader will prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Okay, I still burst! Obtain direct execution magic. Summon magical spikes from the ground to impale enemies like Blood Impaler. Charge to increase the number of spikes. Hell fucking yes! A sealed burst. That didn't take much effort. Yes, all a touch too easy if you ask. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. Ah, uh, I say do overthink it. God, that is cool as heck. How did I not kill the mayor? Doesn't matter, that's pretty fucking good. Oh, 
Oh my god, another bird! Another drip! Another drip! This person must be dreaming too. Are you guys ready? It would appear that way, yes. Ah, okay, why not? I can't say I'm very excited to go back there. That dream world sort of creeps me out. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the mission. Yeah, yeah. A breather is sent it with death and receives the urge to laugh. For I know it will be the sun of life, the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison is stuck beneath the stairway. The long unused of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dish that plays with how end. Light has no place here. We in this forgotten friend. I pray for day to come, for he forsakes me. Time passes, I don't take this list by a single tick of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say, My saber! A clown the door wall of jail and bedding tick is printers under my rage nails. I scream for help, I laugh, I sob. Surely this is a problem of my adult mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cried, for the love of all the gods, tell me! Impossibly I heard the sound of a lock being turned out and falling to the floor. As the door slowly creaks open, I have just enough time to see a silver hair boy in a floating book before the life force inside. My eyes accustomed to blackness explode with pain and I am forced to turn away. Who are you? I asked, checking hands covering my face. How have you come to this place? I am Grimmer Wise. This is Sombrero. Long have we been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one down on Sombrero stank his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my ass, my, my ass. <laughs> Though my eyes, eyes are slaughtered just to bring them. My ears are keen as ever, and they recognize the staccato sounds of the heavy rain. I never thought to hear that again, I whispered. Would that, would that this be not such a terrible storm? Say Grimmer Wise, look at your feet! I forced my eyes open, my eyes! Damn it, I sent eyes, 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 baby. Vanilla, eyes, eyes, baby. <laughs> I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and laughing at my shins. Shins? Like, there's only one shin. <laughs> there's so much of it. Yes, a more comish come moment with the lake. If we do not make a good or an escape, we shall all drown in the castle. We know you are weak. But you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, the long forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers from no matter the cost. The castle, the catacombs are amazed, twisting upon themselves like an endless entrails of a giant. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed north. Okay, you proceed north. Oh, that was only that was a choice. That was a choice. <laughs> At the end of the corridor, I find a row of twenty gorgeous canopy beds resting atop of the carpet of velvet, all covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Searching for the door of the next room. I come that shapeless mass of grey matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns out to those in drifts away of the wind. Realization slowly downs, and I fall to my knees in weep. Corpses, I face bandits of shard and crumbling corpses. 
I look from it from the bed and back again until the horror does fall upon me. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I... <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One moment. Ah, yeah, there we go. Damn. That's too many chicken wings that I dined a few moments ago. Ah. I do not know. Insanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make sound with a scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me the merciful of blackness and I find myself opening the door and leaving the most terrible rooms. I squint down and dim the corridors. No, I, uh, but I'm already proceeding north. That means I'm gonna go back. I proceed east. I squint down the corridors and proceed north. I squint down the corridors and proceed west. At the end of the path, a row of heavy wooden casts in the lights of the sides of the dark chambers. Doubtless they are filled with wine. My tears rose to life. I cannot remember the last time my parched stroke had relieved. I scrambled to the fist cuts and pulled frantically at a cork. The death of the few cops means nothing. I tell myself that cast will be ruined by the flood regardless. Finally, the cork surrenders to my attack and thick red liquid burst from the pour from the hole. This is no wine. It's blood. It is blood is still warm from the body. Whether animal or something else, I cannot say. The foul liquid, liquid soon misses with the rising blood waters, creating a warm that laps against my tides. Wait, 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 what? What? By all the gods, are the rest of these cast filled with blood as well? Da, da, da. I lack the courage to confirm my suspicion. This gas quickly becomes fear as I turn to flee. But my weakening legs betray me, sending me troubling over to the red ocean below. The smell of death is everywhere. It is threatening to consume me. I must escape this hell! Crawling all fours like an animal that I am, holding back screams least for my any fullness enter my mouth. I lurch forward through the red waters in our the room of the freedom. I squint down the dim corridors and I proceed east. I squint down dim the corridors and I proceed north. At the end of the path, the waters rise to my waist. It's also me both physically and spiritually. I pray that this is the way out. Eventually I can stand the sight of the waters no longer. And so to turn my abs, uh, my abs, my abs, yes, my abs, <laughs> my eyes upward. Imagine my surprise when I see a series of paintings hanging on the faded plaster wall. It just paints a person in the prime of life, clad in clothing in the highest quality. The styles are rather strange to me, leading me to believe that these people have lived long, long ago. One obvious words are now fed that particularly catches my eye. This contrastingly thin, breezy cloth and decorated with mottis of flowers and birds. While encircling the furious weights is a leather barrel of the most perfect construction, it is a stunning costume even by modern standards. As I gaze at the portrait, I am struck by a desire to touch it with my own two hands. Yet as I stand a single finger to the painting, I am gripped by the most unpleasant feeling. Staring closely at the image, I see it bends and warps into the shape of another finger. Something behind the picture is pointing at me. Is another prisoner? A fellow image trapped for eternity in this place? I cannot let it pass and so I seize the portrait with both hands and throw it into the water. The wall is hollow behind the painting, and as I can just make out a body, whether or not this is a prisoner, there will be no rescue. The poor soul is locked dead. Scraps of clothing lie on the floor around the bones. Only a small amount of fabric has survived. Boys, features the same delicate designs. 
that were depicted in the portrait. I have been admiring a row of corpses brought from view by portraits of each victim at their pinnacle. Enough! Shielded my eyes, I followed forward through the water. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed south. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed east. At the end of the path, I found myself at the great hall with only sounds of great comfort. The waterlogged red carpet squishes beneath of my feet as I approach the center of the rooms. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table, upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a, ta of a fantastic feast. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a diner guest. Not decisive movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, and all our invited guests, an army of the foe, where insects have made homes in their hall and their own remains. And this is the moment I saw. This one splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a Come on, guys. <coughs> I take a moment to steal my shaking hands, then I slowly back away from the table. Despair to lose sight of my abomination of the abomination, abomination before me. My gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is no mistake. This is a mistake. The chairs proved to be even more terrible than the fist itself. Each one covered in a layer of spikes that run from the seat, up the back and down the arms. That explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. For if not, a simple task will be should agonizing skin that must have sprung from their mouths. My mind grasps fanatically. My mind grasps fanatically at the possibility that these souls have committed some terrible crime for which this was punishment. Going through that surface, they have committed no crime at all. There will be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. I squint down dim the da 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 <laughs> you dumb bastard! That's what, was, what, what Nier was gonna say. Shout sombrero! He surely decides to say more, but the rest of his insult is cut short by the rising tower. Creamer white sweat and tattered, plus the water surface. It is already too late for him. This wasn't. This was how it's supposed to end. What? How did I die? How did I die? Dude! I died! <laughs> okay, there was a pattern? How? Where? Tell me! Ah! <laughs> I can't believe there was a pattern to that. My god! How was that a... <laughs> Now I can finally re- This is one of the most- I know. Ooh, piece of candy. No way, guys. I lost somehow. I can't believe I lost. How was that my fault, okay? How was that my fault? I don't get it. I don't get it. It took me so much time. Yet the game is like, You dumb bastard. How? Okay, sir. That's pretty too mean. And also, how was I supposed to know? What was the pattern? Alright, let's try it again. I'm gonna speed through this. This person must. It would have. Can't say I'm very. Ex Perhaps you should spend less. Yeah.
All right, we're gonna speed through this. I already uh, read all of these guys. I guess it's because the water is like going uh, more and more towards the. It's like the water is going more and more and more towards the, like, coming towards me, so north was a bad idea, I guess? Oh my god, I read so much, guys! I lost once again! My god, this dream is hard. I don't know why is it so hard. I might have to get a guide, you know? Oh, okay, I can say it again. My god, that dream. What's the pattern? The pattern is just basically trying to, you know, get it right eventually. What the heck, man? Ah, I don't mind for long reading if there's a pattern to things, but this, this is just like, of course you should know after you try it a bunch of times. Alright, let's skip to red. Uh, how did I die? Who the... Who the heck knows, seriously. I lost the game! Ah Okay, I should I should don't usually uh don't like uh to do this but it's like this is just basically choose all the choices until you get it right and I don't like that. Let me just go to a guy because seriously what the heck let's see near replicant Dream Maze <laughs> No, I already did this. Okay, there you go.
Alright, let's do this somehow. God damn, I can't believe. Ah! Okay. I eventually will get it. It's a question of when. That is so. It's what can't say I'm very perhaps you should spend less time com Yeah I Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So basically, choose north when you finally reach the beast. Choose north when you choose the beast. Okay, if you do that, everything will be okay. Break it down, somebody cries. And so I gave myself to the effort. And then there was some better and grammar wise. I slammed my body against a thick starting door on a, a third try and get away and we finally ourselves sprawl out on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat, the clouds above me still dark and foreboding but to the west I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can you, how can I thank you? I cried as tears joined the rainy on my cheeks, but we surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly noticed in my dress is started as the ship police tried to cover my exposed skin. Oh, it is a girl. Your dress, as wise. Then you are a woman, madam. I am. Well, okay. I prefer a uh, profound tattoo smile. I suppose that comes as something as surprising as how I exist only in the form of words. Well, yes. I can see that the one no sombrero is disappointed that a turn dress will be given no for description. <laughs> what? I can see that one no sombrero is disappointed that a turn dress will give me no for description, but he hides it well. With a note and a shrug, the three of us set the four to our awakening. But behind us, an awakening, another kind of is taking place. Black smoke fills a abandoned castle, providing the coldest damn souls inside with their final shroud. Oh, Nier actually wanted the description of the torn dress! Woo! After a moment, the castle window shut there with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze ran through the hallways and corridor, breathing the most smoke away for good. As we watch now, uncountable, uncountable, 
black shadow slowly flicker into life, crossing to and fro in front of the, from the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened in the new light as shades. Hmm. Hey, hey, last time we did inside, it was, it was like hooded. It was a hooded person. Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. Right? Thank, Thank you, you so much for saving me. I never want to have a dream like that. You and me both, sister. Me and you both. Damn, man. I don't mind quests like this, but I like when there's patterns, you know? That was mostly like, choose all the options that might lead you to, you know? Alright, guy. And another victim. This work certainly is trying. Yeah, why not? Let's do this. We already started I it. I figured why it not? like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. <laughs> Yeah, but he's a bug, but that doesn't mean he likes uh, any type of words. A colonial mass of his forces was visible in the distance. The tall forms scrapping against the sky. Why is the Sobrero had never seen such a sight? Their eyes widen as they try to take Those it in. These buildings must be huge if we can see them from this far away. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. He said. Under this heat, a mirage or two will hardly be an aspect the sight. Sombrero nodded and wiped his sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sun in his place. He. One moment, guys, just. Ah, 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 ah. Well, some water. Sombrero nodded and wiped the sweat of his brow, leaving a trail of sand in his place. He thought he never been so thirsty. Like he was when he was thinking of that woman and that maze about her torn dress. The ancient road in which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin whiffs of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if they find those who had laid the material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Sombrero like lightheaded, his feet hurting. He crashed down to the rest. I don't know much longer how long I can do this. Is somebody playing a joke on us or what? The complaint had already begun. Why try to not let his eye roll too much? A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to uh, the city of art. Perhaps the bad itself simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of this way might make it easier for you to burn. Sombrero glanced a white screen face, shooking his head and resumed walking. As time passed, Sombrero's feet grew more painful, but his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried to not to look farther than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting... We're definitely getting closer. Say wise in an effort to share his companion. Yes, this much is certain. In Corey Sombrero left his case. Suddenly he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water! he cried. It's water! Water? asked wise. Preposterous! I don't see any water. Over there! Just ahead of us! Look! The sun is reflecting off it! Without warning for response, Sombrero sprang to life, bounded toward the side. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. 
Sombrero closed his eyes, and Zyra's voice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is now as a mirage, he said. Many desert travelers have spoken of such things. Sombrero shook his head bewildered. Suddenly he pointed out in the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is! I just missed it! Look, it's right there! Sombrero sprinted off again, leaving wise with no shows to follow. A few moments of running, Sombrero came to a halt. I could go, I could swear it was right around there here. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hand to his eyes, rotten vigorously. I saw his talking eyes a blue shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. Without a shot, he bounded off search for it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until a spirit wise finally floated up to Sombrero and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you glittering idiot! Stop this at once! There! There is no water here! Sombrero face clouded. There isn't? There is not. And perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you a smash. Are you talking to your soul? No! It's part of the game. It's reading. <laughs> oh, you just wanted to talk her up. Okay, 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 that's fine. <laughs> there is not. If perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you a smash. Why spouse for a moment? Then continue speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. Sombrero looked up, straight ash before him, was a rough impossible tall sculptures. The journey was at an end. You're huge! cried Sombrero, completely forgotten the heat and the pain of the past few hours. Have I never seen anything so big? Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape. A dark rectangle that stretched up forward to the sky. But it stretched up toward toward the sky. But I swear the simulator is ended. Most of the work over with panes of glass that reflect the light in a thousand directions, while all of seem to be nothing but planes of steel. Some have spires on the tops, while others possess triangular caps. What kind of city is this? says Sombrero. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the light is tended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continues as they made their way through the city. Marcellus artistically were everywhere. Great iron crates. Great iron crates with wheels set silent steel rails. Beautiful car works with light of red, amber, green, and down over every street. Move away from the massively sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Somewhere covering glass bricks, glass or bricks, but many were composed of materials. Woman. <coughs> But well, many were composed of materials they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. Unable to find a dim or purpose of the abstract works around them, so and Weiss eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Sombrero uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were in distinction was set for a single word she saw into their right arms. One red alpha, one red beta, and one red gamma. A sombrero moved to touch the nearest statue of her flew in the top of one of the sculptures. Our lighting in all the statue's shoulders emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of, a, of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. Damn it all! It's this one. It's this type of like logic. It, the false ones will only speak lies. With that, the pair departed as was cute. The three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as it began to breathe. Hey, look at that! says Sombrero. They are alive! The triple bowed low before Sombrero. Please! say Alpha. You have to get me out of this nightmare! I am real of this nightmare. Stop lying, say Alpha, uh, say Beta. He turned to Sombrero and threw his hands in there. Alpha is a fake, you know? None of them could be real thing, say Wise. Sombrero followed his eyebrow and considered his answer. 
only one, only one form is real. The others are fake. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. The real one is Alpha. The ice statues don't show really very light. The light used don't be strong when swimming wise will force it to no way. Mm. 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 It would seem we failed. Ah! Yeah. We'd best act more carefully next time. This is the worst job ever. Indeed. Alright, let's do this. Uh, how, how was Alpha? Okay, let's do this. I figured a book like you would be even. So Alpha was uh, saying it wrong. If Alpha would tell it true, became wise in dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma will be fixed. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake will be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, the theory crumbles. How did you know that Gamma was a liar? You just assume that Gamma was a liar. He say, everybody knows that, Ga that Beta is a liar. I already know I am the truth one. Oh, because he said both of them are liars, is that all? Now let us presume Gamma spoke the truth, that makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which will leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let's assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, also Alpha and Gamma lies will make the sense, therefore Beta must be real. As Wei's finished explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbles orders into the dust, with Beta sprung to life once more. Congratulations, Bill, yeah? Say the uh, wise in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his name, bowed his head as low as he could go before an uncomfortable Sobrero put him up to his feet. What do you have to dream like this? asked Wise. What do you have to dream like this? asked Wise. Have you been to this city before? The villagers slowly look around, around sour objects and sculptures and Dr. Alaskin. They shook his head. I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen you before. Deja vu, Monte Sombrero, just like the mayor. That makes sense of an easy stack sombrero during the mayor's dream is spread once more to his mind. <sighs> that was rough. I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. <laughs> okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? I usually will say, wait, wait, we only helped you. But I am glad that that's all we have to help, guys. Because that is a lot, a lot to reading. And believe me, I love reading. But when there's a purpose, you know? Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I've had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. Damn, I did like this quest, but at the same time, I hated it, you know? I both hate it and love it. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. This looks valuable. I can really have it? I got a weapon out of that? Nice! Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown. But we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. For everything. Let's check it out! Alright, let's see. Uh, weapons, weapons. Oh, weapons. All weapons. Bait! You got oh my god, it is as strong as heck. Yep. My new favorite weapon, bait. 
new details, weird story. There was a famous poet, of course. There was once a famous poet in the land of the far of the far east. Now, in his twilight years, his ability had withered such that he could no longer craft a single stance or verse. The poor poet spent every moment working with sorrow for what had been lost. But one day, a monk appeared by his side, gently placed a blade in his hand, and imparted the following words. Oh, I had to level it up. Yeah, that's how I know the next thing. Okay. Wait, wait, wait I forgot the word "edit." I had to give it uh, power to this sword. Let's see. Fate. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Attack power. Pa. Then, let's see. Uh, MP recovery. That sounds pretty good. Pama. It's a Pama. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can move really, really nice. I like this. I like this. That feels good. That feels good, guys. Oh, well. Let's save. I gotta say, guys, I love this game. But all the reading <laughs> got me uh, kind of tired. I will say, this is unusual for this game to have a bunch of reading for no reason. The Forest of Mid quest is the only quest I think in Near Replicant where you where we will have you read a bunch of things for no reason. So if you didn't like this uh, today's episode of near replicant don't worry this was like like i don't know maybe there will be one more quest but uh this is like the only other quest ever that makes you read that much other than that it's a wonderful game i did love the uh the quest of the forest of meat but i'll let I, I won't be a fan to have another quest like this so let's raid somebody i Wow, I think I had enough for today. That's a lot of reading. <laughs> lots and lots of reading. Let's read somebody. Who? Hey! Tan attention, she's a VTuber and she's playing Devil May Cry 4. If you like action, let's do this guys. Let's read here. Uh, it seems I cannot read. Oof, that is sad. That is sad indeed. Oh well, uh, I guess that is all. A uh, wonderful day. Thank you for coming. I hope you guys do like the uh, near episodes. And hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> anyway, have a wonderful breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever you are on. Bye. If my uh, PlayStation 4 lets me uh, stop the broadcast, eventually... There we go.